Hello friends, so today in this video, we're going to discuss the second problem from the latest lead code weekly contest 242 problem name minimum speed to arrive on time. So let's discuss the problem first and then we're going to think over the approach how to solve such type of problems. So the problem is uh, like little bit easy, not too difficult, but the approach, if you understand the idea, then you can easily code the problem. So the problem is just saying that you are given a floating point number hour. So it can be a floating point as you can see it can be at points also now representing the amount of time you need to reach to the office. Okay, so it means that I, I need to reach office in six hours to commute to the office. Then you must take n trains in a sequential order. So you have to take trains to get to your office place. You also given an integer array AR like distance of length n where distance of I describe the distance between the ith in kilometers between the ith train ride so it means that if you take a train if you take a first train or uh, like there are different stations so the distance between the first the station at which you are and the next station is one kilometer then there's a three kilometer and then the two kilometer stay two kilometer and then you'll reach your office so they are like th this is a distance apart between two uh, stations okay so it means that for each train also this is the important part each train can only departure at an integer r so you need to wait between each train ride. What it actually means is, so let's assume that uh, you left the your house and you reach the first station at zero, zero point. Okay. Then you take a train and then it just take half an hour to reach the second, like the next station. If you reach the next station, then at every station, the next uh, like the train will departure at an integer hour. So even it is 0.5, which is like 30 minutes. Okay. The, the, the next train, if you want to go to the next station, the train will departure from that station. The train will departure at an integer hour. So it will go to the next integer, which is one. Okay. So if you reach some station and the time is equal to let's assume 2.75. Okay. Then the, then the next train will departure at three. So you have to wait till that time. Okay, so you have to somehow accordingly do your transition such that you have to be in the closest decimal point because then you have to wait some time. Okay, so you have to return out the minimum possible integer speed. Okay, such that you have to reach your time like you have to reach your office on time. Okay, can you reach your office in time? So you have to somehow de define or determine what is the minimum possible integer. Okay, so if you want to reach office in time and if there is no possible train then you then you have to return on minus one also all the tests are generated in such a way that the answer cannot exceed 10 to the power 7 hours and the hours in this problem which is given is at most two digits like decimal position which can be like 2.75 it cannot it cannot be more than two decimal places so i hope you get the point the problem is just asking you to find out the train speed so why train speed is required so if you just put a standard train speed, the train will take you from one uh, like station to another. So if it has a like particular speed, you will get the time and you also given distances. So you have to de determine the speed only. Okay. So in at the first blink, I just thought that, okay, let's assume that my first distance is, sorry. Uh, if my first distance is D1, okay. If my first distance is D1, the second distance is D2 the the time it take me to reach the next station is like from one station to another if if the speed i determined is s the distance upon speed is time this is the time after which i'll reach the next station if i start my journey at this point which is the time is let's assume equal to zero okay then i reach my station at this point then this is the after this is my duration for the train then after this, I have to wait for some decimal position. Okay. Then after that, I will take another train and this is some speed it will take. Then D D3 is the distance. Then the speed is same and so on such that this is the total time it will take. And I have to ensure that this total time should be less than or equal to the time which is given to me, which is R. I hope you get the point. So this is actually the condition we have to fill, fulfill. So now what you can like, what, what the first thing is comes to my mind is okay. Why not just, so as you can see the speed is same. So the speed is same. If I just take out the common speed, the distance is like D1, D2, D3, 
like there are some buffer values also like alpha d or something like that because you have to go like if you reach the station early then you have to also wait for some time but still you have to you, you can see that these are the summation of that and then less than equal to r and then i can take this s to this point r to this point and then i can calculate that but that's not the right answer because the thing which the next thing which strikes my mind is okay if i keep on because it's less than equal to it's like it's like an inequality there if i somehow keep on increasing my speed why not make my speed a very large value if i if i keep on increasing my speed if i keep on increasing my speed increasing i can reach the like i can reach the office very fast like i can reach the office very fast but is is it keep on increasing my speed the optimal answer no i want to find out the minimum positive integer i, I can just give you the, the maximum value 10 to the 7 and that's the answer for all of them but because i have to find out the minimum positive integer next thing which comes to my mind is okay then there might be some threshold that before some value i cannot reach them but after some value i can always reach because see that's why it is finding out a minimum value after that if i keep on increasing my value after that speed also i will also i will also reach my time i hope you get the point because see if my speed of the train is 100 if i increase my speed of the train to 105 then also i can reach if i can reach using 100 km per hour my office in particular time let's assume if this is some value then if i just increase my speed to 10, 105 then also i will increase so it means that there is, is some threshold value and whenever i see this type of function i always come to binary search so then i decided okay the problem is asking for me for binary search and okay binary search then i can just easily implement that i can just take the minimum value the minimum speed can be one and the maximum speed is that's why they have given the maximum speed 10 to the 7 so just make a 10 to the 7 plus 5 or something like that because just don't keep a 10 to the 7 just increment it by some value then what you can do here is just take the middle value okay this is the speed i am making on my train which is like mid then if I, this is the speed i want then using this speed find out that whether using the speed i can reach my office in time or not if i can reach my office in time using this speed then there is a so low and high low and like left and right then what you can see think that if i can reach my office in time using this speed i can also decrease my speed and also reach my office so i can somehow decrease so my next objective is to somewhat decrease because i want to find a minimum value so i will shift my right pointer to mid but if i cannot reach this point i have to increase my speed and i will make my left pointer r plus one l plus one so if you have watched my binary search playlist it's a very good playlist to understand binary search and i've used the same binary search code for all solving out all the problems so you can check that list out and i will also put the video of this video in that playlist so it will be a very fine playlist to learn and understand different binary search problem because everyone just spaced out understanding binary search but you have to also solve a different binary search problems from lead code and different platforms so you can get habitual how to solve those problems out and then it will be become very easy if you just use a standard binary search uh, like algorithm or logic so i have used the same logic in solving out all the videos or like all the problems then it will become very easy to do so that's what i've, I've been doing and then you just print out so what is the value for minus one the case for minus one will be if the value i'm looking for so i was looking for some speed which should be less than or equal to 10 to the 7 if my speed increased that if i find out an answer which is greater than 10 to the 7 then the answer is false i cannot take that answer and that's the logic it's just a very small code as you can see so i just take a left and right pointer you can just also make it 10 to the 5 whatever you can say i just put 10 to the 7 plus 9 and while left is less than r always put less than r and this is mid left plus r divided by 2 which is finding out the mid value total time it will take so i was calculating my total time it will take for this particular mid value it did over all the distances and what i will do so if i reached some station my next train will come at a point the next decimal closest position okay so i will find out my next decimal cl closest position so i just have to find out my scene instead of that i was just using this function all like so if my value is let's assume 2.75 you can also take a seal of that but instead of seal i just prefer this using this so if my value is 2.775 how i can find out my seal i just check that whether 2.75 now so i just type cast 2.75 to integer so it will become 2 
So if 2.75 is greater than 2, obviously it is greater than 2. It means that my value is greater than I have to seal it. So I will increment 1 to it. So it, it's just uh, it's just easily finding out the seal value. Okay, so it, it, it's just that if you want to find out the seal value, how you can do that? You just check that whether any number has some decimal position. If any number has some decimal position, uh, uh, like increment its value by 1. Okay, and just, it's, it's like 4.75, so it will make 5. Okay, and if it's like every value is incremented to 1. Okay, if it is having some decimal position. If it is like only 3, then don't increment it. Okay, and uh, after I just get my starting time, I, I just find out my next train. If I take out the next train at that particular station, what is the total time it will increment? My total time will increment by the total distance divided by the speed of the train. So that's what I've told you. So the first thing is, I just re reach my station at zero, which is the first point. This will not occur, which is zero. Then the first D1, because for the first distance, I will take my train at a speed of S. Okay. Then after that, I reach the next station, but I have to wait some time. How much time? I have to make this value go to the closest integer. That's what I've been doing here. Go to the closest integer. And then from that, I will take the next distance and divide it by the speed of the train, which is the speed of train is middle, which is like finding out the middle and just divide that distance by middle and keep on adding the value value again and again till we reach the end. In the end, if you just check that the total time it take to reach the end, if it is more than the R, which is given to me, if it is more than it means that this value is not good. I want to somehow increase the speed of the train. So I will make my mid plus one else. If it is good, I will make my right go to mid, which I've already told you in the example. Okay. And then in the end, we just check out whether my, and the answer is always stored in the left uh, value. If the left value is greater than n by seven, then the answer is minus one else the answer is in the left value. I hope you understand the logic and the code for this problem. You can also look down the code in the description or you can pause the video out at this point and you can look at the code here also. If you still have any doubts, you can mention down. I'll see next one. Till then keep like coding and also subscribe to the video if you like this type of explanation. I'll see next one. Till then keep coding and bye.